What is the Sphinx? The Great Sphinx at Giza, c. 2520-2494 BCE, is a monumental human-headed lion sculpture carved from a natural limestone hill. This 240-foot colossus is thought to represent the old kingdom pharaoh Khafra. Like the Assyrian Lamassu, Egyptians protected gateways with depictions of lions. It was thought that lions never slept and they were associated with the sun. In Egypt, as in much of the ancient world, human-animal hybrids were considered divine and this promoted Khafra's status as a divine ruler. Why did the Egyptians build pyramids? A pyramid is an example of monumental funerary architecture with a square base and sloping triangular sides. These massive, mountain-like buildings are the burial places of Egyptian pharaohs and serve an important religious and political function, to protect the pharaoh's soul. Or ka and to aid in the transition of the Ka to the afterlife. One of the most famous of all pyramid sites is the Great Pyramids of Giza. The Great Pyramids of Giza, the tallest of which is 450 feet high, were built during the Old Kingdom. C. 2575 to 2150 BCE, and were intended for the rulers of the Fourth Dynasty. Mankor, Khafra, and Khufu. They were built of granite and limestone and memorialize these rulers as divine beings. What is a skeletal construction? In some forms of architecture, walls do a lot of the work of supporting the overall weight of a structure. In skeletal construction, a thin interior frame, rather than walls, supports weight, allowing for additional windows and much thinner walls. Both Gothic cathedrals and massive steel-framed skyscrapers rely on this type of construction to reach dizzying heights and incorporate large windows. What is the steel of Hammurabi? Hammurabi was a Babylonian king who ruled over the lands of Mesopotamia during the 2nd millennium B. C. He is famous for his code of laws, the earliest known legal code. The code itself is carved into a 7-foot steel, a large slab of black diorite. And in it Hammurabi declares that his code will cause justice to prevail in the land and to destroy the wicked and the evil. That the strong might not oppress the weak nor the weak the strong, as quoted in Stockstad 38. At the top of the steel, above the written code, is a carving that depicts Hammurabi himself standing before the sun god Shamash. Shamash, who was also the Babylonian god of justice, is seated in his throne and is surrounded by symbols of power. He rests his feet on a mountain top, wears a long 
elaborate robe, and offers a rod and rope circle in his hands. Hammurabi's arms are crossed respectfully in front of him. And he receives the laws as given to him by Shamash. The steel serves as a powerful marker of Hammurabi's high status and represents the divine inspiration of his code. What is a ziggurat? A ziggurat is a mountain-like structure formed by a series of steps and topped with a temple or a shrine. Placing shrines and temples at a higher elevation served both practical and religious purposes. Practically speaking, the higher elevation would protect the religious structure from flooding or attack. It also served to glorify the ruler and the gods worshipped at the site. Ziggurats represented a place where heaven and earth met. The ruins of the White Temple at Uruk are located in what is now known as Warka, Iraq. This temple was part of a ziggurat dedicated to the Sumerian god Anu. And housed statues of gods, goddesses, and temple patrons. It was oriented along the points of the compass and had a central chamber with an altar for religious rituals. What are Indus seals? Indus seals are small, flat squares carved from stone. Each with an impression carved onto one side, and a knob protruding from the other. Most Indus seals depict naturalistic animals and an as yet untranslated script. The one-horned cow is a common animal featured on Indus seals, sometimes portrayed next to an altar. Other animals include the elephant, rhinoceros, and tiger. Due to the fact that the language remains a mystery, the exact function of these seals is still unknown. Those scholars think they were used to stamp clay as a method of keeping business and trade records. What is color? Scientifically, color is the result of various wavelengths of light perceived by the human eye. The range of colors present in a rainbow, which transitions from red to violet, make up the visible spectrum. In art terms, the word color is interchangeable with the word hue. The primary colors, or primary hues, are red, yellow, and blue. Combinations of primary colors form all other hues. Two primary colors are blended to form secondary hues such as green and orange. There are even tertiary colors, which are made up of a blend of at least three hues. What was the Indus Valley Civilization? The Indus Valley Civilization, c. 2600 to 1900 BCE, was one of the earliest civilizations in South 
Asia and was established in present-day Pakistan and northwest India. It is sometimes referred to as the Harappa civilization. Major urban areas of the Indus Valley include Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, and Shanhudaro, which form a cohesive group due to their architectural similarities. Not much is known about Indus Valley culture or religion, but the discovery of art artifacts, including ancient seals, greatly interests art historians and other scholars who are eager to make cultural connections between the Indus Valley and contemporary art and culture in India and Southeast Asia. What is the Ishtar Gate? The Ishtar Gate was a Neo-Babylonian, double-arched gateway with four towers. Each featuring notched walls known as crenellations. The Ishtar Gate was originally over 40 feet tall, and the towers rose to nearly 100 feet. The deep blue brick structure was decorated with stylized lions and palm trees an impressive fortification indeed. The monumental gate mirrored the wealth and extravagance of other Babylonian structures such as the Hanging Gardens, which was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. A reconstruction of the Ishtar Gate has been installed in a museum in Berlin, Germany. What is the work of Ace? Also known as the carved vase of Uruk, the work of Ace is a three foot tall alabaster vase found by archaeologists near the White Temple. The vase is decorated with stories that have been divided into registers, or bands. Almost like a comic strip that tells a story of humans making offerings to the gods. The lowest register depicts the natural world of water. And plants while above this are domesticated animals. The middle register features nude men holding baskets. And the top register shows a king giving an offering to the Sumerian goddess Inanna. The figures in the registers are shown with their heads and legs in profile view. But with torsos and shoulders in a three-quarter view. What is the post and lintel system? The post and lintel system is the oldest and simplest architectural construction in which two upright forms, called posts, support the load of a horizontal beam, known as a lintel. The posts must be strong, and close, enough to prevent the lintel from weakening in the middle. Especially if the lintel is carrying the heavy load of a wall or a roof. What is Hinduism? With its roots in the culture of the Indus Valley, Hinduism is not a monolithic religion. But a name that encompasses diverse groups who worship many different gods and goddesses with multifaceted attributes. 
One major unifying element of Hinduism is adherence to the Vedas. Ancient works of literature that serve as the foundation of the Hindu religion. What are hieroglyphs? Hieroglyphs were used by the ancient Egyptians as a formal writing system made up of a combination of pictures and alphabetic letters. The term comes from the Greek word hieros, which means sacred and glyph, which means writing or drawing. The meaning of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs was mostly unknown until the 18th century discovery of the Rosetta Stone. An ancient steel made of diorite upon which the same text was written in three languages. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, another Egyptian script called the Demotic script, as well as ancient Greek. This allowed scholars to finally understand many previously untranslatable hieroglyphic inscriptions. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs are found on papyrus scrolls, wall paintings, and carved into stone. They often accompany images and are used to identify scenes and figures. How did the ancient Chinese cast bronze? The ancient Chinese used a technique known as piece mold bronze. Casting to make their ritual vessels and other bronze work. The first step was to make a clay model of the entire piece, including all of the decorations. Another heavier clay was then packed around this model, which formed a mold. After the clay dried, the mold was cut into pieces which released the interior model. The mold, now reassembled, could be filled with molten bronze. Bronze, an alloy of tin and copper, plus other metals, becomes molten at one. 800 degrees and requires an enormous amount of labor to manipulate. What is an arch? In art historical terms, an arch is a semicircular construction of blocks of material called voussoirs, which hold each other in place due to compression, and span an open space. This type of arch is known as a true arch. Other simple forms of arches include the corbelled arch, in which blocks of material are overlapped in order to span a similar opening. The true arch is stronger than a corbelled arch, especially when constructed out of stone. The pointed arch, rather than the round arch, provides superior support and was widely used in Gothic cathedrals. What is cuneiform? Cuneiform is the first system of written language, invented by the Sumerians around 3100 B.C. It was originally pictographic. This means, for example, that a bull's head would represent a bull. Over time, 
cuneiform evolved into a more abstract system of signs consisting of wedge-shaped lines pressed into clay tablets with a pointed tool called a stylus. Cuneiform was used to keep track of business records in cities like Uruk, in modern-day Iraq. Cuneiform tablets have withstood the test of time and offer scholars a wonderful window into the culture of the ancient Near East. What is Daoism? Like Confucianism, Daoism, also spelled Taoism, is also considered to be both a religion and a philosophy, and is native to China. Daoist philosophy is more metaphysically focused than Confucianism and emphasizes intuition and developing a harmonious relationship with nature. It is founded upon the teachings of two ancient philosophers named Laozi and Zhuangzi. The word Dao means the ultimate way and is symbolically linked to water. Water is yielding and moves gently around obstacles. But it is also strong it can turn even the largest stones into sand. What is value? Value is a property of color related to how light or dark the color appears. The higher the value, the lighter the color. For example, light blue pigment has a higher value than dark blue because more white has been mixed into it. Sharp contrasts of light and dark, known as chiaroscuro, can create drama as well as meaning in art. The artist Rembrandt is known for using this technique in his paintings. In The Night Watch, 1642, Rembrandt used chiaroscuro to create a spotlight effect that draws the viewer's attention to the elaborately costumed Captain Franz Banning Cock and his yellow-clad companion. The other figures seem to recede into the background as Rembrandt used drab. Lower value hues for the rest of piece. Why does art from the Amarna period look so different from other Egyptian art? During the New Kingdom, a ruler named Aminophis IV broke away from the traditional religious values of Egypt and focused his worship on a single god, the sun god, Aten. In order to honor Aten, he changed his name to Akhenaten. This pharaoh not only broke away from religious customs, but artistic customs as well. Much of the art made during his reign features the god Aten. Depicted as a sun disk with linear rays emanating from it. Each ray has a small hand, often pointing down towards Akhenaten, which represents divine blessing. Images showing Akhenaten, such as a limestone relief featuring the ruler and his wife. Nefertiti are unusual in that the pharaoh is not traditionally idealized. He looks almost ugly, in fact, with a protruding chin and long, thin body. In the relief, he is shown sitting with Nefertiti, 
playing with their children. It is a warm, family scene that is quite different from conventional pharaonic works. From periods both before and after. What is Confucianism? Confucianism is considered to be both a philosophy and a religion, and is native to China. It is named for Confucius, a scholar born in 551 BCE, whose teachings form the foundation of the philosophy. Confucianism is concerned with the relationship between people in society including relationships with ancestors and even the emperor. The virtue of human-heartedness, called Ren, is key to being a Junzi, or gentleman. During the Han Dynasty, 206 B.C.E-220 CE, Confucianism became the official religion of the state and had a major impact on Chinese art and culture. Where is the ancient Near East? The ancient Near East is a term used by art historians to refer to the area near the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, also called Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is a Greek word that means the land between two rivers. The ancient Near East is also thought of as the cradle of civilization. As it is here that urban society developed for the first time, with it came the invention of writing and laws. The first examples of epic poetry, the construction of cities, and of course, monumental art and architecture. What is a Lamasu? A Lamasu is a monumental stone sculpture famously part of a Syrian palace decoration and serves as a protector of the palace gateway. A Lamasu combines human and animal features and includes a lion or bull body wings, a human head with full beard and eyebrows, and a total of five legs. When approached from the side the Lamasu appears to be walking. And from the front, it seems to be standing firmly at attention. The Lamasu from the fortress of Sargon in the Assyrian city of Karasabad was constructed around 720 BCE and stands over 14 feet tall. Part sculpture and part architectural feature. This giant creature keeps a watchful eye on any approaching palace visitor. Why is Egyptian portrait sculpture so stiff? Egyptian portrait sculpture, especially sculptures of the pharaohs, were designed to last for eternity and were made according to strict guidelines. Pharaohs needed to be clearly identifiable by their elaborate headdresses and false beards. Pharaonic sculptures show the ruler either standing erect or sitting enthroned with hands resting on the knees, one first clenched and one lying flat. 
These dignified sculptures command respect, and are also very durable. Carved from the same piece of grey sandstone, the double portrait of Menkor and a queen. From Giza, depicts the pharaoh with his wife. Each figure stands with a rigid, upright posture. Menkor's body is youthful and strong, his hands are at his sides, fists clenched. And his left leg takes a stern step forward. The queen's arms, however, wrap delicately around the pharaoh's waist, joining the couple in a supportive embrace. This piece follows strict Egyptian conventions of portraiture, clearly indicating the ruler's power and the queen's status at his side. What impact did the Silk Road have on the ancient art trade? During the 2nd century B. C. the Silk Road was the longest road on earth, at over 5,000 miles. It connected the Chinese city of Luoyang with the city of Rome in western, Europe and branched off to locations as far as India and Afghanistan. The journey from east to west started at Yemen, the Jade Gate. Located at the western end of the Great Wall of China. Goods would have exchanged hands many times before reaching the furthest points along the road. The road allowed ancient Romans access to painted Chinese silk and other luxury items such as ivory, gold, gems, and spices. What impact did the Silk Road have on the ancient art trade? During the 2nd century B. CE, the Silk Road was the longest road on earth, at over 5,000 miles. It connected the Chinese city of Luoyang with the city of Rome in western Europe and branched off to locations as far as India and Afghanistan. The journey from east to west started at Yemen, the Jade Gate. Located at the western end of the Great Wall of China. Goods would have exchanged hands many times before reaching the furthest points along the road. The road allowed ancient Romans access to painted Chinese silk. And other luxury items such as ivory, gold, gems, and spices. What is a bi disc? Although these circular pendants look like they could be worn as jewelry, they are much too bulky and heavy for such a purpose. Instead, they were likely used in ritual worship of the sky. Bye pronounced B, discs were made of nephrite, a greenish stone similar to jade. Some were smooth, displaying only traces of the tool marks used to shape them. While others were elaborately decorated. A bi disc from the Zhou dynasty, 1100 to 221 BCE was discovered in a tomb near Luoyang, China, and is intricately carved with dragons. 
the ancient Chinese regarded dragons as symbols of power who were thought to pass between heaven and earth and to bring rain. It would have taken many hours of difficult work to grind and polish the dragons and other abstract designs on the Joe Bai disc. What is a Bai disc? Although these circular pendants look like they could be worn as jewelry. They are much too bulky and heavy for such a purpose. Instead, they were likely used in ritual worship of the sky. By, pronounced B, discs were made of nephrite, a greenish stone similar to jade. Some were smooth displaying only traces of the tool marks used to shape them. While others were elaborately decorated. A bi disc from the Zhou dynasty, 1100 to 221 BCE, was discovered in a tomb near Luoyang, China, and is intricately carved with dragons. The ancient Chinese regarded dragons as symbols of power who were thought to pass between heaven and earth and to bring rain. It would have taken many hours of difficult work to grind and polish the dragons and other abstract designs on the Joe Bai disc. How are Chinese characters formed? Rather than referring to sounds like the English alphabet, the letters of the Chinese alphabet refer to entire words or ideas. These are called characters, or calligraphs. Like Near Eastern cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Some Chinese characters started out as pictographs, which means the character resembles what it depicts. The Chinese language is extremely visual in that the form of the language also denotes meaning. And this made a major impact on Chinese art throughout history. How are Chinese characters formed? Rather than referring to sounds like the English alphabet, the letters of the Chinese alphabet refer to entire words or ideas. These are called characters, or calligraphs. Like Near Eastern cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Some Chinese characters started out as pictographs, which means the character resembles what it depicts. The Chinese language is extremely visual in that the form of the language also denotes meaning. And this made a major impact on Chinese art throughout history. What did ancient Chinese architecture look like? While no ancient Chinese buildings remain standing today, houses and palaces from the Han Dynasty, 206 B. C. E. 220 CE, survive in ceramic models. They were made for Han tombs and give. Scholars an idea of what the architecture of the time would have looked like. 
Han buildings were made of wood and were notable for their curved roofs and jutting eaves. The weight of Han buildings were supported by a system of vertical and horizontal beams. Which meant that the walls did not need to bear any of the structure's weight. Colorfully painted screens, usually red and black, were used to separate rooms. The rest of the wood structure was either painted or lacquered, which helped to protect it from the elements. What did ancient Chinese architecture look like? While no ancient Chinese buildings remain standing today, houses and palaces from the Han Dynasty, 206 B. C. E. 220 C. E. survive in ceramic models. They were made for Han tombs and give scholars an idea of what the architecture of the time would have looked like. Han buildings were made of wood and were notable for their curved roofs and jutting eaves. The weight of Han buildings were supported by a system of vertical and horizontal beams. Which meant that the walls did not need to bear any of the structure's weight. Colorfully painted screens, usually red and black, were used to separate rooms. The rest of the wood structure was either painted or lacquered, which helped to protect it from the elements. What is Yoman Pottery? The Japanese Yoman culture, see. 10,000 to 300 BCE, was a settled hunter-gatherer society with a long-standing tradition of clay pottery. Yoman pottery from the middle and later periods are very creative. And the clay was pulled and twisted into unique forms. Animalistic pieces called dogu. Are likely effigies of the people who owned them, and are highly abstracted. Some have large, heart-shaped faces, long twisting arms, and even markings similar to tattoos. What is Yoman Pottery? The Japanese Yoman culture, see. 10,000 to 300 BCE, was a settled hunter-gatherer society with a long-standing tradition of clay pottery. Yoman pottery from the middle and later periods are very creative. And the clay was pulled and twisted into unique forms. Animalistic pieces called dagu. Are likely effigies of the people who owned them, and are highly abstracted. Some have large, heart-shaped faces, long twisting arms, and even markings similar to tattoos. What are Hanuwa? Hanuwa are figurative funerary markers made during the Kofun period in Japan, 300 to 710 C. E, developing over time from simple, cylindrical forms. These unglazed, clay works reflect a Japanese taste for simple, organic design. Never perfectly symmetrical, Hanuwa are purposefully irregular. 
though their exact function is unknown. Hanuwa may serve to connect the world of the dead with the world of the living. What are Hanuwa? Hanuwa are figurative funerary markers made during the Kofun period in Japan, 300 to 710 C. E. Developing over time from simple, cylindrical forms. These unglazed, clay works reflect a Japanese taste for simple, organic design. Never perfectly symmetrical, Hanuwa are purposefully irregular. Though their exact function is unknown. Hanuwa may serve to connect the world of the dead with the world of the living. What is the ISE Shrine? The ISE Shrine is an important Shinto complex in Japan dedicated to the goddess Amaterasu, ancestor of the Japanese emperors, known as the Way of the Gods. Shinto may be considered a religion or a philosophy and is indigenous to Japan. Water purification rituals and worship of animistic local Deities known as Kami are fundamental aspects of Shinto. The ISE complex features a main shrine which has a thatched roof and is raised off the ground with wooden pilings. Made of unpainted cypress wood, the shrine style reflects natural simplicity. Historically, only members of the Japanese imperial Family were allowed worship in ISC's interior sanctuary. Every 20 years, the main shrine is completely rebuilt on the site. An important political and religious ritual. What is the ISC shrine? The ISE Shrine is an important Shinto complex in Japan dedicated to the goddess Amaterasu, ancestor of the Japanese emperors, known as the Way of the Gods. Shinto may be considered a religion or a philosophy and is indigenous to Japan. Water purification rituals and worship of animistic local Deities known as Kami are fundamental aspects of Shinto. The ISE complex features a main shrine which has a thatched roof and is raised off the ground with wooden pilings. Made of unpainted cypress wood, the shrine style reflects natural simplicity. Historically, only members of the Japanese imperial Family were allowed worship in ISC's interior sanctuary. Every 20 years, the main shrine is completely rebuilt on the site. An important political and religious ritual. What is the Silla Crown? Though influenced by the art and culture of China, Korean art is distinct and has a long history. 
Around 100 BCE a kingdom known as the Silla Kingdom took control over most of the Korean peninsula. The Silla crown is a gold and jade headpiece likely made somewhere between the 5th and 6th. Century CE made from sheets of gold and adorned with jewels and spangles. The upright styling of the crown has been linked to either trees or antlers, which symbolize life and supernatural power. It is possible that this crown was either ceremonial, or never meant to be worn at all. What is the Silla crown? Though influenced by the art and culture of China, Korean art is distinct and has a long history. Around 100 BCE a kingdom known as the Silla Kingdom took control over most of the Korean peninsula. The Silla crown is a gold and jade headpiece likely made somewhere between the 5th and 6th. Century CE made from sheets of gold and adorned with jewels and spangles. The upright styling of the crown has been linked to either trees or antlers, which symbolize life and supernatural power. It is possible that this crown was either ceremonial, or never meant to be worn at all. What are the colossal heads of the Almec? Often considered to be the mother culture of Mesoamerica, the Almecs flourished between 1200 to 600 B. CE in present-day Mexico. The Almec society left behind no written language. But their monumental art indicates that the culture was highly stratified, with clearly defined social classes. The colossal heads found at San Lorenzo in Veracruz are one of the most recognizable monumental art forms in the Americas. Made of basalt, the colossal heads weigh between 5 and 20 tons each. Up to 8 feet tall, the heavy featured sculptures have broad noses and thick lips. The heads wear helmets with ear flaps and straps under the chin. Scholars believe they represent rulers or historic figures important to the Almec culture. What are the colossal heads of the Almec? Often considered to be the mother culture of Mesoamerica, the Almecs flourished between 1200 to 600 B. CE in present-day Mexico. The Almec society left behind no written language. But their monumental art indicates that the culture was highly stratified, with clearly defined social classes. The colossal heads found at San Lorenzo in Veracruz are one of the most recognizable monumental art forms in the Americas. Made of basalt, the colossal heads weigh between 5 and 20 tons each. Up to 8 feet tall, the heavy featured sculptures have broad noses and thick lips. The heads wear helmets with ear flaps and straps under the chin. Scholars believe they represent rulers or historic figures important to the Almec culture. What is Valdivian sculpture?
the Valdivian culture, c. 3550 to 1600 BCE, was based in southern Ecuador and was older than the first dynasties of Egypt. They are known for making clay figurines, which are some of the earliest representative art produced in the Americas. These figurines were usually quite small, and some pieces are hermaphroditic. Displaying both male and female characteristics. Many of these sculptures have been found in domestic settings. Which suggest an association with women and fertility. What is Valdivian sculpture? The Valdivian culture, c. 3550 to 1600 BCE, was based in southern Ecuador and was older than the first dynasties of Egypt. They are known for making clay figurines which are some of the earliest representative art produced in the Americas. These figurines were usually quite small, and some pieces are hermaphroditic. Displaying both male and female characteristics. Many of these sculptures have been found in domestic settings, which suggest an association with women and fertility. What is the Raymond de Stila? The Raymond de Stila depicts a human like jaguar deity and is an example of Chavin style art from the Peruvian Andes in South America. The Chavin culture, considered a mother culture to later Peru, developed between 1500 and 300 BCE. And Chavin style art emphasized complex abstract patterns and featured animals such as jaguars and eagles. The jaguar creature carved on the Raymond de Stila is known as the Staff God. It is depicted wearing an elaborate headdress made from stacked, serpentine monster heads. This interweaving image emphasizes balance and symmetry in its abstract design. What is the Raymond de Stila? The Raymond de Stila depicts a human like jaguar deity and is an Example of Chavin style art from the Peruvian Andes in South America. The Chavin culture, considered a mother culture to later Peru, developed between 1500 and 300 BCE. And Chavin style art emphasized complex abstract patterns and featured animals such as jaguars and eagles. The jaguar creature carved on the Raymond de Stila is known as the Staff God. It is depicted wearing an elaborate headdress made from stacked, serpentine monster heads. This interweaving image emphasizes balance and symmetry in its abstract design. What are the Nazca Lines? The Nazca Lines are monumental geoglyphs carved lightly into the earth in southern Peru. And were made by the Nazca culture between around 400 and 600 c. 
e the lines form symbolic shapes, including animals, and natural and geometric forms. Such as a hummingbird, monkey, lizard, a flower, tree, and a spiral and trapezoid. These shapes, some of which are over 400 feet long, were made by removing a top layer of red pebbled earth to reveal a whiter surface underneath. Scholars wonder if the Nazca geoglyphs were depictions of constellations. Or in some way linked to astronomy, but no conclusive connection has been found. It is possible the Nazca lines were an important part of religious ritual. Or were intended for a divine audience, as they are best seen from the air. What are the Nazca lines? The Nazca lines are monumental geoglyphs carved lightly into the earth in southern Peru. And were made by the Nazca culture between around 400 and 600 c. E the lines form symbolic shapes, including animals, and natural and geometric forms. Such as a hummingbird, monkey, lizard, a flower, tree, and a spiral and trapezoid. These shapes, some of which are over 400 feet long, were made by removing a top layer of red pebbled earth to reveal a whiter surface underneath. Scholars wonder if the Nazca geoglyphs were depictions of constellations, or in some way linked to astronomy, but no conclusive connection has been found. It is possible the Nazca lines were an important part of religious ritual. Or were intended for a divine audience, as they are best seen from the air. What is a bi disc? Although these circular pendants look like they could be worn as jewelry. They are much too bulky and heavy for such a purpose. Instead, they were likely used in ritual worship of the sky. By, pronounced B, discs were made of nephrite, a greenish stone similar to jade. Some were smooth displaying only traces of the tool marks used to shape them. While others were elaborately decorated. A bi-disc from the Zhou dynasty, 1100-221 BCE, was discovered in a tomb near Luoyang, China, and is intricately carved with dragons. The ancient Chinese regarded dragons as symbols of power who were thought to pass between heaven and earth and to bring rain. It would have taken many hours of difficult work to grind and polish the dragons and other abstract designs on the Zhou Bai disc. What common images are found in Hindu iconography? Hindu art includes a wide range of images, especially of important deities. The following table explains four important Hindu deities and their iconography. Shiva personifies both creation and destruction, embodies all of existence. Has over 1,000 names, 
is often represented as lord of the dance often depicted as a phallus or pillar. If shown as human, can feature multiple limbs, matted hair, and a crescent moon above the head. Sometimes shown with a third eye and a trident, wears a serpent as a scarf. As lord of the dance, is shown surrounded by a ring of fire Vishnu preserver of order and balance in the universe. Takes the form of Krishna. A divine lover who battles the demon Kansa often depicted with blue skin, shown riding Garuda, a large bird. Wears a tall crown and jewelry. Takes many different animal forms including a boar and a tortoise. Can also take the form of Krishna or Buddha. Devi multiform female goddess worshipped as Parvati, wife of Shiva. Lakshmi, wife of Vishnu, and Radha, lover of Krishna. She also personifies anger as Durga. Takes numerous forms, each with a different identity. As Durga, she rides a lion. Ganesha son of Devi, as Durga. Worshipped as the remover of obstacles. Shown with an elephant head. What is the Raimondi Stila? The Raimondi Stila depicts a human like jaguar deity and is an example of Chavin style art from the Peruvian Andes in South America. The Chavin culture, considered a mother culture to later Peru, developed between 1500 and 300 BCE. And Chavin style art emphasized complex abstract patterns and featured animals such as jaguars and eagles. The jaguar creature carved on the Raimondi stela is known as the staff god. It is depicted wearing an elaborate headdress made from stacked, serpentine monster heads. This interweaving image emphasizes balance and symmetry in its abstract design. What are the colossal heads of the Almec? Often considered to be the mother culture of Mesoamerica, the Almecs flourished between 1200 to 600 BCE in present day Mexico. The Almec society left behind no written language. But their monumental art indicates that the culture was highly stratified, with clearly defined social classes. The colossal heads found at San Lorenzo in Veracruz are one. Of the most recognizable monumental art forms in the Americas. Made of basalt, the colossal heads weigh between 5 and 20 tons each. Up to 8 feet tall, the heavy featured sculptures have broad noses and thick lips. The heads wear helmets with ear flaps and straps under the chin. Scholars believe they represent rulers or historic figures important to the Almec culture. What are the Nazca Lines? The Nazca Lines are monumental geoglyphs carved lightly into the earth in southern Peru. And were made by the Nazca culture between around 400 and 600 c. E. The lines form symbolic shapes, including animals, and natural and geometric forms. 
such as a hummingbird, monkey, lizard, a flower, tree, and a spiral and trapezoid. These shapes, some of which are over 400 feet long, were made by removing a top layer of red pebbled earth to reveal a whiter surface underneath. Scholars wonder if the Nazca geoglyphs were depictions of constellations or in some way linked to astronomy, but no conclusive connection has been found. It is possible the Nazca lines were an important part of religious ritual, or were intended for a divine audience, as they are best seen from the air. What is the picture plane? For more information on perspective, Bruno Leschi and the picture plane. Please see the early modern world, c. 4001300. What is composition? The term composition refers to the arrangement of forms in a work of art. When art historians analyze the composition of a work of art, they are often interested in balance. The repetition of shapes, the use of perspective, and any sense of depth in the work. What did ancient Chinese architecture look like? While no ancient Chinese buildings remain standing today, houses and palaces from the Han Dynasty, 206 B. C.E-220 CE, survive in ceramic models. They were made for Han tombs and give. Scholars an idea of what the architecture of the time would have looked like. Han buildings were made of wood and were notable for their curved roofs and jutting eaves. The weight of Han buildings were supported by a system of vertical and horizontal beams. Which meant that the walls did not need to bear any of the structure's weight. Colorfully painted screens usually red and black, were used to separate rooms. The rest of the wood structure was either painted or lacquered, which helped to protect it from the elements. What is the Narmer palette? The Narmer palette, c. 2950-2775 BCE, is one of the most important examples of Egyptian art. The shield-like palette was made from a material called greensist, and depicts a king identified as Narmer. But is possibly the ruler Menes, who was celebrated for uniting the lands of Egypt under his rule. The story is told through a combination of hieroglyphic writing and imagery. On one side of the palette, Narmer is the largest figure depicted. An example of Egyptian art's use of the hieratic scale, the pharaoh's large size indicates his importance. His hand is raised above his head, about to strike an enemy with a club. The opposite side features the headless bodies of Narmer's enemies. Watched over by Horus, 
the falcon god of the sky. In a lower register, the cat-like animals have their necks intertwined. All in all, the imagery of the palette serves to proclaim the strength of Narmer and represents the unification of the lands of Egypt. What is iconography? Iconography is the study of visual subject matter. Many works of art depict the same, or similar, subject matter. For example the Virgin Mary appears frequently in Western European art. A figure such as the Virgin Mary is associated with specific objects. Manner of dress, or body positions known as attributes, as well as signs and symbols. An understanding of repeated signs, symbols, and attributes, helps in understanding the meaning of art. What is the hieratratic scale? The hieratic scale is a system used to visually communicate power in Egyptian. As well as the art of other cultures, including the ancient Near East and in medieval European art, for example. Significant or important individuals, such as pharaohs, were depicted as being much larger than any figures in a scene. In the Narmer palette, the hieratic scale helps to identify Narmer in a busy scene filled with many individuals. How do you read a work of art? When a piece of street art catches your eye, or you find yourself walking slowly through the rooms of an art museum. You may not necessarily feel the need to read a work of art. Art moves us, and we respond emotionally to the beautiful, disturbing, and mysterious sights around us. A portrait of a mother and a child, such as Mary Cassatt's painting. The bath, might cause you to reflect on your own familial relationships. Or, you may find yourself curiously transfixed by the sheer enormity of Clay's Oldenburg and Kusch van Bruggen's 5,500 pound shuttlecock. Perched precariously in the garden of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. Sometimes, However, we want to dig deeper and investigate the meaning of art. What is the Silla Crown? Though influenced by the art and culture of China, Korean art is distinct and has a long history. Around 100 BCE a kingdom known as the Silla Kingdom took control over most of the Korean peninsula. The Silla crown is a gold and jade headpiece likely made somewhere between the 5th and 6th. Century CE made from sheets of gold and adorned with jewels and spangles. The upright styling of the crown has been linked to either trees or antlers, which symbolize life and supernatural power. It is possible that this crown was either ceremonial, or never meant to be worn at all.
What markings distinguish images of the Buddha? The Buddha is not a god, but an enlightened being who has achieved superhuman status and has escaped the Buddhist cycle of life and death. The earliest images of the Buddha show the holy figure as a monk wearing long robes and can be identified by certain body attributes called lakshanas. As a boy, the Buddha was wealthy. Therefore one important body attribute is elongated ears due to years of wearing heavy jewelry. Another important marking is called the urna. A curl of hair between the Buddha's eyebrows, often depicted as a dot. Madras, or hand gestures, allow images of the Buddha to convey specific messages. For example, if the Buddha is shown with his right hand reaching towards the ground. This represents a call to witness the Buddha's enlightenment and is a madra known as Bhumisparsha, earth touching. How are Chinese characters formed? Rather than referring to sounds like the English alphabet, the letters of the Chinese alphabet refer to entire words or ideas. These are called characters, or calligraphs. Like Near Eastern cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Some Chinese characters started out as pictographs, which means the character resembles what it depicts. The Chinese language is extremely visual in that the form of the language also denotes meaning. And this made a major impact on Chinese art throughout history. What does it mean if a work of art is representational? A representational work of art is one that realistically depicts objects from the real world. For example, 17th century Dutch still lives are representational. As these paintings feature realistic images of everyday objects. What is the difference between Theravada Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism? Theravada Buddhism is the earliest form of the religion and is called the Path of the Elders. It is most popular in India, Sri Lanka and parts of mainland Southeast Asia. Mahayana Buddhism is the second important school of Buddhism and is known as the Great Path. Mahayana Buddhist worship bodhisattvas, compassionate Buddhist to be who understand. The path to enlightenment and devote themselves to teaching others who to achieve nirvana. Mahayana Buddhism is popular in northern India, China, Japan, Korea, and Nepal. What is the ISE Shrine? The ISE Shrine is an important Shinto complex in Japan dedicated to the goddess Amaterasu, ancestor of the Japanese emperors, known as the Way of the Gods.
Shinto may be considered a religion or a philosophy and is indigenous to Japan. Water purification rituals and worship of animistic local Deities known as Kami are fundamental aspects of Shinto. The ISE complex features a main shrine which has a thatched roof and is raised off the ground with wooden pilings. Made of unpainted cypress wood, the shrine style reflects natural simplicity. Historically, only members of the Japanese imperial family were allowed worship in ISC's interior sanctuary. Every 20 years, the main shrine is completely rebuilt on the site. An important political and religious ritual. What is Ancient Egypt? Ancient Egypt was a powerful civilization in northeastern Africa, which developed along the Nile River around 5,000 years ago and lasted for over 3,000 years. During that long span of time, Art in Egypt stayed very consistent in terms of style, form, and subject. Egypt was ruled by powerful dynasties led by a pharaoh. These dynasties are organized by scholars into three distinct king toms, the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms, as well as intermediate periods and a late period, which lasted until 332 BCE. When Egypt was conquered by Alexander the Great. In 30 BCE, Egypt became part of the Roman Empire. Polytheistic religion was an important part of daily life in ancient Egypt. And the pharaohs were considered divine rulers. The art and culture of ancient Egypt greatly influenced other cultures throughout history. And we continue to be fascinated by the culture's richly decorated tombs, pyramids, and other art objects. What is a yakshi? A Yakshi, an erotic goddess figure worshipped throughout India, represents fertility and vegetation. These sensual figures are used to decorate the exterior of the great stupa in Sanchi, India. The Yakshi from Sanchi are partially clothed and are depicted holding onto mango tree branches. Encouraging them to bloom. The curving poses of the Yakshi were later adopted by Buddhist artists in their depictions of Buddha's mother giving birth. What were Ashoka's pillars? Ashoka was considered one of the greatest emperors of the Iron Age Mora Empire. Located in the eastern portion of modern-day India. Ashoka converted to Buddhism, formalized a legal code according to Buddhist principles. And spread Buddhist teachings across his land by inscribing monolithic stones with his code. These stone pillars reached as high as 40 feet tall and are said to symbolize the axis mundi or the axis of the world. The pillars mark the coming together of heaven and earth. As well as pilgrimage sites associated with the Buddha. 
the tops of the pillars were elaborately carved and often depict back-to-back open-mouthed lions. Which proclaim Buddha's message for all who will listen. What is style? The style of a work of art is the distinctive way in which it has been formally arranged. Style can also refer to the way in which a work of art is characteristic of the work of a specific artist. And the time period, or the geographical location, in which it was created. For example, a painting by Vincent van Gogh can be instantly recognizable because of its distinctive style. Van Gogh is known for paintings that feature bold colors. Thick application of paint, and noticeable brush strokes. What is Valdivian sculpture? The Valdivian culture, c. 3550 to 1600 BCE, was based in southern Ecuador and was older than the first dynasties of Egypt. They are known for making clay figurines, which are some of the earliest representative art produced in the Americas. These figurines were usually quite small and some pieces are hermaphroditic. Displaying both male and female characteristics. Many of these sculptures have been found in domestic settings. Which suggest an association with women and fertility. What is a formal analysis? A formal analysis is a method of understanding a work of art by studying a work's formal qualities. Including shape, color, line space, and texture. A formal analysis should include as much detail as possible with the goal of Understanding how a particular work of art visually communicates ideas to a viewer.